Hello everyone, it's Farkad here. In this video, I'm going to show you all the cheats in the forest. Now these are mostly known as console commands, though they are basically cheats. They're very simple to use, they don't require mods, and they're all approved by the developers. It's already in the game. As soon as you get in the game, type in developer mode on. Don't have to type anything else. There's no enter, anything like that. Just type in developer mode on. And when you press F1, the console should open up in the top left. Now, if you have a laptop and you've got F lock on, this would probably prevent it happening. So make sure you have F lock off if it's relevant. If you're wondering if these cheats or console commands are better than mod API and the ultimate cheat menu, yes and no. The ultimate cheat menu can let you fly and it is easier to add things, though it does change variables in the game that allow you to do things that you can't do in the normal game. Hence the reason I don't play with it. Because if I do something with ultimate cheat menu in my playthrough, it might not work without it. So I tend to avoid it. Now in this video, I won't be listing all the commands, just some of the most common ones. There's a group of commands that I'm going to cover in a separate video, but they're a little bit more complex. They're the build structure commands. Now this one's a little bit complicated, but it's interesting. It's called lighting time of day override. It changes the lighting of the day. You press space, then I'm going to type in noon. It's going to change it to day. So I will be able to witness the plane crash during the daytime. Now this doesn't change the actual time of the day. It will still go in the nighttime, meaning that you'll get cold and stuff like that. Though it will always be daytime until you turn it off. There's other commands too, but noon's the best, I think. The sun is directly above you. If you're practicing creative mode, this can be a really good one. But this is a plane crash during the daytime. It does look a little bit different, doesn't it? If you wait around inside the plane for a while, Without using this cheat, eventually it will go daytime. Okay, once I've started, you can use your commands. Now these do turn on for the game, so you might have to turn developer mode off or get out of the game and get back in. So first one I'm going to do is God mode on. And it's very simple to turn it off, it's just God mode off. It gives you unlimited health, unlimited energy, unlimited hunger, thirst, and stamina. It's exactly like creative mode. The next one is add all items. And that does exactly what you think it does. It gives you all the items. And it gives you a lot of ammunition too. Now it doesn't fill up the sticks, the bags. So you add the bags, it doesn't fill them up. So what I like to do is I press F1, arrow up, repeats the same command as before. And then it fills them up. So now I should have 20 sticks, 10 rocks. So with the time of day override, I don't have to put it in again. So I'll just go back to what it is. And there it is. So you press up arrow, down, goes to the thing, I can erase it, I turn it off, goes back to where it was. So it's just a normal day. The next one is build hack, which is basically what creative mode is, which is god mode, build hack and enemies off. So build hack on, and I go to build something. This is very good if you're playing a legit playthrough and you want to test something out, but you don't want to save the game. I do it quite often to see if things will work, just like that. So you can test things in your proper game. Now, if you've got a lot of blueprints and you don't want to stand there doing this, you can type in build all ghosts. And it builds everything. Keep in mind, it's very loud. Next one is speedy run on. And that makes you run very, very fast, as you can see. Now, I recommend you use this one in conjunction with God mode because it is very easy to kill yourself like that jumping through the air, you get a lot of air time. It can be good for doing tasks that require a long travel. Say if I wanted to build a, a bridge across the sinkhole. The issue usually is, is if you're gonna use rock walls, you're gonna have heaps of rock blueprints down in the bottom of the sinkhole. But with this, I've built the two ends. I can cancel everything. So I go to, I type in cancel all ghosts. This is very loud, by the way. So keep that in mind. So I stuffed it up. So this end wasn't high enough, so I'm gonna have to redo it. Cancel all ghosts. Then I can run around. And I have a bridge over the sinkhole. Now the issue is I can't reach it, so I'm gonna have to use the build all ghost command. Here we go. Just keep in mind when you're running, you can't really run in a straight line. <laughs> it just goes on an angle. So I'm not tempted to run across this. You don't want monsters if you're trying to do something and you don't want to deal with them. Just type in kill all enemies. 
kills them all. Now the problem with speedy run is turning it off it actually stops you from being able to run. The trick to this is just a power attack and then you're able to run again. I don't know why that happens, but it does. The next one is invisible on. Now it doesn't make you invisible. What it does is this. When you go into water, you can walk around normally. So it can be very, very good if you want to build something underwater. Also the sharks don't bother you, which is kind of good. I don't believe it's in the ultimate cheat menu, this one. And to turn it off. The next one I find quite useful. And if you're struggling to breed rabbits, I recommend you do this. Because breeding rabbits is a pain because it's only 10% chance every time you sleep. Add item 77. Gives you a rabbit. And you still want to make another one. F1, press up. Put the same command. Just like that. There you go. You're going to have a lot of rabbits to breed. The next one is caves. Now a lot of people have issues with the caves being too dark. And I don't blame you. It is quite dark. And also if you've got fears, associated phobias, it can make it real difficult. Well, here's a command to get around that. Cave light on. There you go. You can now see in the caves. But you can see why it turns off and on. If things don't spawn in properly. But you'll be able to see everything that's there. Now, if you don't want to deal with enemies, it's enemies off. And they all disappear. That's essentially what creative mode is. Enemies off, god mode, and build a hack on. And to change it back, you just turn it back on. Same with cave light. It actually changes the outside world as well. It's not as dark outside. Now this is one I use to get a lot of screenshots for the wiki. Uh, all those images on there, or just about all the ones that are cropped in mine. What it is, it's terrain, render, off. And you can see how it works. It's actually very good for spotting items. If you've lost something in the grass or you're hunting, <laughs> it's much easier to see mushrooms this way. But yeah, what I'll do, I'll drop an item in much more light than that. Screenshot it, crop it, there you go, done. And same with that one, to turn it back on, just turn it on. Now, if it's not raining and you want it to rain or you want it to be sunny, it's force rain, heavy. And force rain, sunny, gets rid of it. It's a little bit delayed, I'm not sure if it's working properly. <laughs> If you want to get rid of some of the grass, and I haven't tested this properly, by the way, whether it will actually save it. It's cut, grass, 10, or 100. The bigger you make it, the more it's going to take to load. You can see why there's grass in the game. It looks quite barren without it. I don't know if it will save, though. Keep that in mind. If you don't like trees, if you want to cut down some trees, cut down trees, 5%. That will remove 5% of the trees. If we go cut down trees... 100% there is no trees left in the game this can actually be a good way to explore the map and you'll see how small the game actually is without all its trees it's a lot smaller than you think but it's also good if you want to find somewhere to build because when there's trees in the way you can't really see if it's going to be a good place good for checking out inside the forest rather than doing all the obvious places that most people do some other helpful stuff is you press F2 and it gives you some statistics and stuff of what's going on like your coordinates and how much RAM the game's using that I don't know enough about that stuff to really go into depth and also you can bring up the log and that sort of stuff it's quite difficult to use but you can press F1 enter help press F1 again it lists all the commands there there's a lot and it's quite tricky to use this because of how it's designed but you gotta press get into the inventory press F1 and you can open it up again now if the game's too difficult or too hard and you're just in a normal game mode, you can change the difficulty. So it's set difficulty mode, hard survival. And that will change the game mode. If you want to access creative mode, you're going to have to get set game mode, standard, creative, or mod. I don't know what mod is. If you're in creative, you won't be able to spawn monsters in. If you're in a creative game, you want to make it normal, type in set game mode, creative, and then select your difficulty. So set difficulty mode, peaceful, normal, hard survival, etc. Now that should work. I haven't really tested it too much. Now it's getting dark, so what I'm gonna do, lighting time of day override, noon. Super bright, the sun's directly above your head, doesn't move. You can change your outfits. There's a full list on the wiki, but for instance, add clothing by 
ID, go nine, changes me into the black suit, the tuxedo. And there's all the rest there too as well. If you don't want animals, you can turn them off. You're trying to eat me while I'm putting commands in and you just type it, turn it back on if you want it. If you never want to run out of items, because add all items doesn't actually add infinite items, you can use item hack on and that gives you unlimited. So you can keep using whatever you're trying to use. Though it does lock certain things like the bow, you can't use it. But if you hold down the bow and turn it back on, you can do this. <laughs> you have to click very fast to do that. I've got a macro key for that one. Shooting a little too fast. If you want to see your stats, press F3. This is what I showed in my strength and athleticism guide. It tells you how you're going with it. As you can see, it works because I started in a normal game. I'm in hard survival now. With the stew combo verbose command, I think that's pronounced right, you can tell if a stew recipe is successful. I've got the forest app for that one by Zebulon. That can tell you the recipes. If it's successful, it will tell you the benefits you got from it. You can see there. But if it fails, it'll tell you stew fail. As you can see, that was a failed recipe. I added one more extra mushroom. I was trying to make a balanced stew, but there was no water and I added an extra mushroom and it didn't work. So nothing successful. Got enemies here. Hold that down. Turn automatic on. Now I can kill them. Like that. A lot of fun. It's like doom. You can turn birds off. I'm not sure if that's useful to you. If you can't stand the seagull screaming. Keep in mind if you're going to do this with the bow, it's going to spawn a lot of arrows and it might cause your game to lag really bad. Now if you want to spawn animals, that's quite easy. So spawn animal and then you enter the type of animal you want. So crocodile. You can't spawn sharks though. And if you want to spawn heaps, just keep pressing F1 up. Like this. But it's the same with all the animals. You can do rabbit, lizard, deer, turtles, tortoises, raccoons, squirrels, boar, and crocodiles. And that's one way to get rid of them. Reset all enemies. Kills all the enemies. And they respawn still. But I'm not sure if that could be used to reset the AI. Now this one is quite confusing but it opens up a lot of studies if you're into that sort of thing it's pm active state labels on and i'm on 4k recording so this isn't, this isn't the best but it shows their behavior i don't know if you can read that it's very small i should be doing it on 1080p for this but you can test what effigies and red paint does if you have that on you'll see what they're thinking it also shows where they are on the map so searching those ones up there they're searching for me. Home state means that they're asleep, I believe. But it'll show you aggressive or fearful. They're fearful of me here. Probably because it's new in the game. They don't know who I am yet. But this could be a good way of testing the cannibal's behavior in that. I'm going to turn that off because it's lagging the game too much. Achievement log level all. This will log when you've got achievement progress. So if you craft an item, it will tell you here if it was successful and other things. If you've successfully searched a cave, part of the Splunker achievement, that sort of thing. Good for testing or seeing what your progress is up to. Though quite complex, I think. Game time scale. This one speeds up the game. Now it's normally set at one. If I set it at, and I turn God mode off, I'm decreasing stats at 10 times the speed as what I was before. Well, I set at 50, so it's 50 times faster. I set game time scale back to one, goes back to normal. Now time scale, not game time scale, speeds up how fast the game plays. So I'm playing twice the speed at two. As you see, it's like fast forward. No, I'm not speeding up the footage here. And you can go very fast. I'm gonna go up to 10. Don't go too fast or the game will start chunking. Just work your way up in increments. But this is fast forwarding time. I can't see the sun moving because I've got the set time thing. I'll go up to 20 and see what happens. Jeez. <laughs> this is insanely fast. It's very choppy. Go back to one. If you set it to zero, it pauses the game. But we're going to go to one. Now there is a command to give you unlimited spray can. Unlimited hairspray on. And it never runs out. It can go forever. If you type in kill local player, 
It should kill you. I got gun mode on. Kills you. There is kill me fast, which is permanent suicide, which means you won't be able to be revived. Now you can spawn mutants and enemies. So spawn regular family. And that will spawn a normal, regular cannibal tribe. Now, if you want to do testing where they attack, you spawn families. If you spawn them individually, they'll run away most of the time. But they spawn painted family. Spawn skinned family. Spawn skinny family. So it's all the tribes in one. Now, you can spawn them individually. Spawn mutant fireman. They're special ones. And then there's spawn mutant. Armsy, Vags, V-A-G-S, that's Virginia, and Fat. And there's also the babies. And I'm completely surrounded. Now if I turn Asta off, which is pathfinding, you'll notice some... He just swam across the English Channel. With Asta off, they've got no pathfinding, meaning they'll do stupid crap. Though the most entertaining one is that they'll run into cliffs or just come after you in the water. They're all clubbed together there, just gonna drop a bomb. <laughs> uh, that loosened them up a bit. And Asta on. Because otherwise they're just too stupid. They're still running around in circles though. <laughs> Blew them into the air. Uh. If you want to add all the story items, which is like the key card, it's just add all story items. And then you've got your key cards and stuff so you can uh, finish the game if you like. It also comes with the gold one, which you need to access the yacht to open up the door. Now, if you're looking to play a normal game, but you want to get attacked more, you can spawn the artifact ball, which is used to pacify or make the enemies more angry. That's add item 294. Because I've already got it, it won't work, so spawn item 294. So I got a few there, just in case. I can't pick them up, because I already got one. There's also the go-to commands, they're all listed on the wiki as well. There's quite a few there. So like 50 minus 383, 1328. Takes me right in front of the vault door. Or go to 351441384. I go to the up. If you're looking to test out a zipline catcher, which is quite popular these days, there's bound to be more methods. What you can do is turn log hack on and it gives you unlimited logs to drop. Though you have to turn it off to be able to interact with anything else. You can't just drop it. It just keeps going and going and going and going. So it's log hack off. And then I can drop it. So I want to fill up some storage, log hack on. And I can just fill them up like this. Like that. Log hack off again. Go down. Yep, they explode. They always explode. Now there's another one that's called save, and that just saves your game. If you can't find a save spot or you need to exit the game quickly, just type in F1 and save. Saves over the slot that you're currently in, I believe. I haven't saved this one, so it's not gonna save for me. There's also the find passenger command, but I cover that in more depth in another video. I'll place a link here. Anyway, those are the most useful commands. There's a full list on the wiki, though those are the ones that are most useful, those are the ones that I would use. Just keep in mind that you might get achievements for these. I probably missed some that were important, but I covered a lot here, so <laughs> hopefully I've done a good enough job. And remember, the developers have made these commands so they're safe. You don't need mods. If you have the ultimate cheat menu on, that's default key is F1, so you're going to run into trouble using ultimate cheat menu with console commands. Anyway, my favorite command is probably the build hack on command or the cancel all ghosts because sometimes you get rogue blueprints that you can't cancel it's a good way to remove them but if you have a favorite let me know in the comments and if you like this video make sure you like and subscribe cheers <laughs>